In the spring of 2014, Living Ocean's Clear the Coast campaign manager Will Saltow led a team of volunteers into Sea Otter Cove while checking out reports of a washed up Japanese skiff nearby. They were shocked by the amount of marine debris littering the shoreline there. Sea Otter Cove faces the open Pacific like a catcher's mitt, so it collects debris that is harmful to the birds, mammals and fish that live there. Plastic bottles were strewn across the beach, along with washed up fishing nets, a broken skiff, even a refrigerator. The team gathered up what debris they could and Will vowed that he would come back in the summer to tackle the problem with more volunteers and better equipment. In August, he returned to Sea Otter Cove along with enough willing hands to collect a boatload of trash and a plan to bring it back to Living Ocean's base in Sointula. The first day we hit the beach bright and early, raring to go. Over the next two weeks, the volunteers collected dozens of plastic floats and fishing gear, car tires on rims, kilometers of rope tangled with weeds, plenty of styrofoam, and thousands of plastic containers and bottles. By the end of the first day, we'd filled up the herring skiff, now Will had to figure out where to put the growing pile of debris that was being collected on the shore. Will came up with a plan to build a raft using the materials at hand and load it with all the debris so it could be towed out to the landing craft. The volunteer crew went to work lashing together drift logs with rope and netting that had washed up on the beach. We hiked to nearby beaches, filled up collector bags and transported the garbage to our raft by helicopter. The plan is that Catherine's going to fly over the hump here to uh, the next bay over to Lowry Bay and pick up uh, the stashes of bags of collected marine debris that we've got over there and drop them just by our raft so that we can then load them up and have them ready for the barge when it comes in. Sure. Then it was time to find out if Will's raft was seaworthy. We towed it out into the cove. It floated, so we tied it to a mooring buoy and loaded the debris into a landing craft. When the team got back to Sointula safely, the debris was waiting in a dumpster at the local landfill. Our summer student, Carmen, organized more volunteers to separate the recyclables from the trash. Our two weeks of work netted over 2,600 kilos of debris. Only 40% of the debris went to landfill, with the rest either recycled or repurposed. Did they do it again? Oh yes. Oh yes. yes. We would sign up in Absolutely. a minute. Absolutely. It was yeah. a fabulous yeah. holiday, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it, really, it really was fabulous. Yeah. Because you had a goal, you had a team, you were working, and then, you know, you got to just hang out with each other. It was really good. Yeah, and we accomplished something. We felt we did. Yeah. We had, you know, over 5,000 pounds of garbage that we collected, and that was in seven days. So we, you know, that's almost 1,000 pounds a day. At Living Oceans, we're working to protect the ocean from things like marine debris by coordinating volunteers who want to pitch in and help out. But it's expensive to get them to remote locations and safely back again. That's where your donations really help keep us going. Ultimately though, cleaning up is not the solution. Even when we were at Sea Otter Cove, 
I watched more and more plastic waste washing ashore with every rising tide, and I couldn't help wondering how soon we would have to return and do it all over again. Our society really needs to change its habits. We consume more plastic every year and more of it's ending up in the ocean. And one good way to start would be by going back to reusable drink containers and reusable bags. I'm Karen Rustin at Living Oceans. I'd like to thank our sponsors for this Sea Otter Cove expedition. First off, the government and the people of Japan who very kindly provided funds to assist with the cleanup of tsunami-related debris, much of which we found on the beach at Sea Otter Cove. We'd also like to thank the province of British Columbia, the Vancouver Aquarium, Loblaws, and the Johnson Ohana Foundation for their contributions. <laughs>